Hi guys, welcome back to the Sweaty Potato Meyer RC channel, home of the fastest Red Cat Rampage XT on YouTube. And guys, today uh, we're gonna go be going over um, fuels, uh, fuel mixes, and oils. And I'm gonna talk about you know your your options on fuels. You know, there's numerous options on fuels, but I want to talk about options on fuels. I want to talk about the you know the different mixes you can you can do. And then I also wanted to talk about the different oils. I got a few different oils up here that I, I've used. And uh, so first off, I want to talk about, you know, the tools. And I'm going to pull out this and set this up here because this is what I run, you know, for fuel. And there's all kinds of options out there. Um, with these little engines, I would definitely be running premium. I wouldn't be running anything, anything with ethanol. I, you know, if, if you're going to go to the pump, um, there's some, there's some towns that you can, you can actually get, uh, you can actually get racing fuel, like turbo blue, I think is what it's called. You can get it up, you can get it right at the pump and it's, it's a little bit more octane than, uh, 93. So, um, there's, there's options out there you can do, but definitely go with 93. Do not go with any ethanol because... Unless you have a spiral diaphragm, it doesn't seem to bother those because uh, they actually made them for that reason. But uh, if you don't have a spiral diaphragm in the carburetor, I wouldn't take the chance running any ethanol. But we're going to talk about C12 because that's what I run. And the reason I run it is because when I started out, you know, a long time ago with the Rampage, I always say that this, this started the whole thing for me, and it did. Um, this is where it all started. And what I used to run when I ran the Rampage, when I first got it, I was, I was running just pump gas, you know, 93. And, you know, that's what I first started out on. And I was running 25 to 1, you know, as far as ratio. And, you know, it, it ran. That's about all I can say is it ran. And uh, then I uh, moved, you know, after doing that pump fuel for a little while, I thought about, well, what, what the heck? Why not put some octane booster? And this is, this is Klopp's, this is their uh, Octane Booster. And this is, I've said this in the past in, in, some of my, in some of my other videos when I was using it, but this is the only, or not the only, but the first Octane Booster that I've ever used that actually, you know, you put this into fuel and it smells like race fuel. I ain't, I ain't kidding you guys. So I wanted to mention that. And what I would do is I would, I would bump up the, the Octane because it says uh, you can ra raise it, what is it? One ounce octane booster per gallon will raise the octane by one and a half or two and a half numbers. So I can't remember if, if I was using two two ounces of it, but I would put that in my fuel with the oil and everything, and that just became a pain in the ass because I was having to mix all this stuff into my into my fuel, you know, to make to make the mix that I wanted. And so I I kind of went away with, away with that, and I did a lot of research. Right? And there's all kinds of stuff you can run out there. You can run. I think you can run up to C16 and you can, I mean, you can run all different kinds of stuff, but, uh, um, I did some research and I was really happy with, with what I saw on, you know, the C12 and, I'm, um, I'm pretty sure it's 112. It might even be 113 octane, but, uh, it's 112 octane or whatever. And, um, it's, it's a leaded racing fuel is what it is. And I went with that because I like the numbers. I like the octane numbers and, you know, just the, the different, the, if you go to V, if you go to the VP fuels website, you know, VP fuels, go just Google it. You can go to their fuel chart and it'll actually, you know, break down the fuels and it tells, tells you all about them and everything. So I wanted, you know, something, I didn't want to go, you know, super high octane because, you know, I just didn't want to do that. And I wanted, you know, the best bang for, bang for my buck before going to an oxygen, oxygenated fuel. And so that's why I chose C12. And so um, I, I went with C12 and, uh, this is one thing I'm going to tell you, and I'm a firm believer here. I'll leave this up here while I'm still talking about it, but, uh, you know, the C12, I, when I first started using it, the first tank I put in the rampage, I, and I've seen it all over the internet, all over groups, other people's channels and stuff like that. I've seen it everywhere. And they say, well, these little engines don't run enough compression where that's going to make any difference. Well, I'm going to call you bull. I'm going to call bullshit on that right now, right here, right now. Because the first time I used uh, VP, VPC 12 in that uh, with, I think it was 32 to 1 I was running. It was like night and day difference compared to regular pump fuel. It was like, 
don't know, it was angry. It had so much energy. It was, it was excited. I don't know how to explain it. It was like, it was like a different machine. It like woke it up. You know, I don't know how else to explain it. So anybody tells you that these little engines putting that fuel, you know, putting race fuel in a little engine like this isn't going to make a difference. Yes, it does, guys. Yes, it does. It makes a big difference. I'm just, I'm just right here to tell you that. And notice right here, it says right on the bottom, making power. And it does. It makes power when it does. It, it, okay, so in a, you know, like a full sky size car, maybe you're not going to, maybe you don't make it. Okay, I used to run, you know, race fuel Sunoco 110 in my, in my Mustang that had nitrous on it. And I ran it because you had, I ran, because I, I had nitrous on it and I wanted my combustion chip temperatures to be the way, where they needed to be with the racing fuel. So long story short, it didn't make much of a difference in my Mustang compared to like premium. You know, it didn't make much of a difference. But in these little engines, it makes a huge difference. I'm telling you, if you don't believe me, just try it. That's the only, that's the only proof you're going to be, or you're only, that's the only proof you're going to get. So uh, just try it one day. You won't be disappointed. I guarantee you. It, it makes a humongous difference. Um, let me see what else we got going on. Okay, I'm still... Well, back to the C12, I keep putting it down there, but uh, uh, I wanted to, you know, touch on where to get it and, you know, the cost of it. And so I can usually, where I get mine, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I just go across the street. My uh, There's a dirt bike racing shop right across the street from my house on Old 34. That, I mean, I could just go right over there. I just drive right across the street, pick me up a five gallon pail. But that's, that's how I get it. You know, your best option is probably not going to be ordering it online because you're probably going to have to pay gargantuan amounts of shipping and shit unless you get, get them little bottles. And I don't even know if you can get C12 in them little bottles. Don't know much about it, getting it over the line or anything like that. But what I'm going to just tell you, you know, thank, places you can get it is like a dirt bike shop, a, a dirt bike, a racing dirt bike shop, you know, where, you know, motocross, they do motocross. You know, you're going to find it there. Um, another place you'll find it is, um, uh, there's a place up in the quad cities around here. I can't remember what it's called, but it's, it, what you do is you go up there and they got all kinds of performance parts for cars and they're just hanging on the wall. It's like a, it's like a summit store, but it's not called summit and you know, just different race shops will have them, you know, will we'll have the fuel that you can buy on the shelf. And then another option is if you have a racetrack that, you know, is nearby you, like I have the local racetrack 34, just right up the road from me. Um, if I can just go up there and they have a tank in the ground that is filled with Snoco race fuel and it's, it's 110 octane. And I, I didn't really want to go with, first of all, I didn't like the idea of it being kept in a drum in the ground, you know, like gasoline. So I, that kind of, you know, I didn't like that. And then, um, what was the other thing? Oh, I, the C12 is higher octane. So, um, so that's why I went with the C12. You know, there's a lot of information or a lot of, a lot of thought behind it. I just didn't, I just didn't just, oh, switch one day. No, I just didn't do that. Um, so that's kind of, you know, where you can get it um, and all that stuff. You know, trying to think if there's anything else I'm, before I put this thing back down here and I had to fucking lift it back up, whether there's something else I got to say about it. So, and then for all my uh, new subscribers, I don't know if any, you know, I guarantee you my new subscribers don't know, but um, for all those people out there that are wondering why I have notes in my hand and, and, uh, you know, wondering why I keep forgetting things. Well, in 2017, uh, I was involved in a horrific motorcycle, motorcycle accident and I broke my neck and suffered a traumatic brain injury. It's just a, by the grace of God that I'm even here. So I'm a miracle in a, in a, you know, right in front of people's eyes. So, um, anyways, that's why I got notes and that's kind of why I, uh, ramble and, and talk on. So, um, and then what I wanted to touch on was the oils. And first we'll start off with clocks because that's where I started. You know, I, Rampage was the first one. And so I started out with clocks Techno, Techno Plate. It's, yeah, it's Techno Plate. It's got a red label. They got two of them with red labels. I can't, I can't remember the other one, but I started out with clocks Super Techno Plate. And then I went up to, I went to this Bean All and you know, I like the Clots products and everything. Um, the only thing I didn't like about this bean all is it's only good in temperatures around 32 degrees Fahrenheit and above because anything below that, the oil will start separating from the gasoline and coagulate together and then it can cause damage. So um, 
I never had any problems with it. In fact, I ran it out in snow a couple times. But, um, you know, if you use a little bit of common sense, you don't store your, your fuel at, you know, you know, 32 degrees. And, of course, if you make sure it's shook up before you go out and run, because I, I, mine was stored in the garage, and you can see here it's uh, 72 degrees in the garage. So, um, yeah, so I just filled it up, made sure my fuel was mixed up real well, and went out and bashed it in the snow 15 minutes. Free, fuel's not going to freeze. Nothing's going to happen in that amount of time. So I was able to get away with it there. But I didn't like that, you know, that gloom, doom gloom hanging over the head, you know, that something could happen. So, um, so I got rid I didn't, I should, I didn't have to get rid of clocks, you know, I, cause they make other brands like, or other, uh, oils like the super plate that could be used at lower temperatures. But, um, I just went away with that and I, uh, I tried this Amsoil Saber and, uh, this, this stuff is a really cool oil. Um, it's, uh, and what I used to, <laughs> It's known for being able to be mixed, you know, at really, really thin ratios. And what I did was I uh, went straight to 101 and I ran it in several of my machines. Um, you know, another, another thing I wanted to go by, okay, never, never mind. We'll talk about ratios later, but uh, no, get back to this Amsoil Saber. So I started running it and I went straight to 101 and uh, I ran it in several of my machines for, I think almost two years. So. And never had any problems, not not even one. So, uh, really good oil. Um, it's I'm, I mean it's I, I don't have anything bad to say about it. You know, the the I got some the, when I first got it. I got a uh, a package off of eBay. It was like a nine or a ten ten thing of them little one gallon mixed baggy things. And I, I guess on this on the early days of this oil. Um, you, they, you know, were claiming that you could run it in snowmobiles and everything, but now they just claim it's uh, handheld equipment. It just says right here, um, says right here, uh, using all ha handheld two-stroke equipment. Well, I, I have a video up where I'm reading the back of one of their early labels, and it says you can be using it in anything. Well, I think it scared everybody away in, in like the motocross and snowmobiles and that kind of that kind of hobby is because they didn't like running the sound of running their engines that lean of oil so i that's why i think it never caught on that way but as far as you know in these in these things it's perfectly fine and i ran it for uh you know so for for a couple of years i think with at 101 and never had any problems and i i really like it you know i like ams oil products you know a lot of people run dominator that's a great oil um all that stuff and then so I made the switch to, to uh, Motul 800 and I made the switch to Motul 800 when I got the 40 GT and we'll go over um, some some stuff like some stuff about that when we get down to the ratios but um, I ran this I, I started using this and I'm never gonna go back as far as I'm concerned unless they quit making it because I, li I like it it's really good oil um, but I made this switch to Motul 800 when I got the 40 GT, and I uh, that's when I made the switch. And I run the Motul at uh, 25 to one in all my machines. And that's another thing I wanted to check on. I wanted oh another thing I wanted to say. What was really cool is Motul 800. I got Motul on the bottom, <laughs> on, on the body. <laughs> I thought that was pretty awesome too. You know, it just kind of went together. Um, that doesn't have anything to do with why I run this. I run this Motul 800 is uh, when I got the 40 GTs because that's what Mike Taylor recommends. That's his favorite oil. So that's why I use it. So, um, and I love it too. So that's, that's what I run. And like I said, I probably am not going to go back just because with my brain injury having, you know, Two different kinds of oils mix it two different ratios and and stuff like that it just I, I can get them things confused really easy so um so that's why i just run motul 800 and all my machines at 25 to 1. and uh now i'm gonna go over ratios um now see let's see where do i want to go with this first of all I'll talk about ratios and how I started out. Okay. So 
my oil ratio, when I first got the Rampage, I got it, got out the user's manual, it says right in there, 25 to one, everywhere on the internet, 25 to one. So what? that's what I did, I ran 25 to one. Um, and then, you know, I was, you know, I was like, I would watch it run, you know, after owning it for a couple months, you know, I'd watch it run and it's like, just smoking like crazy. You know, it, it almost like, I don't know, like a freight train, not, not not like a freight train, but like a, like a little nitro engine running, running Richard shit. But, uh, you know, I, and it was just, I was looking at it and it's like, man, that's a lot of oil, you know, it's burning. And I was like, man, we could probably get rid of some of that, I would think. So from there, I backed it down to 28 to one. And then that worked and there was a little less smoke. And then I went to 32 to one and that worked because I used that in all my uh, handheld equipment. So my chainsaw, my lawn, or uh, my weed eater and all that stuff. So that worked well with that too. And then I switched to 101 because you got this Amazon Oil Sabre. It's tested and proven at 101 and I'm, I guess I could prove it as well, man. I ran it for two years, absolutely no issues. So awesome oil. And so that's why I went to the 101. And then, you know, I uh, got this 40 GT and, and, you know, when I ordered the 40 GT, you know, it says right in there to go in and read the owner's manual and everything. And, uh, so I go in there and I read the owner's manual and, you know, it says right in there that these, these are supposed to be mixed at 25 to one. And it says in bold print, 25 to one, no engine issues. And then they give examples of oil that they, you know, recommend or Mike recommends Motul. There's, uh, there's not any AMS, AMS oil because I asked him at, about, uh, AMS oil saver and I asked him about the ratios and. He didn't, he, I don't think that he's used much AMS oil, so he doesn't have much, much experience with AMS oil, but he, he you know, he mentioned, uh, Motul and a couple other ones it, and it's in the manual. And so that's why I went with, with the Motul. And then it says in 25 to one bold says no engine issues. And so, um, you know, I wanted to make sure I went by the manufacturer's recommendations and mixed it with 25 to one. So that's why I run 25 to one. Like I said, I don't want to have to be, you know, can, keeping you know two or three different ratios you know straight with my brain injury so i i run all my machines at, at, at one ratio 25 to one so um and then okay so i know a lot of you guys are wondering in your heads it's like okay so what's the difference when you're running 25 to one compared to like say 100 to one well there there's a big difference and where the difference lies is um, in, okay, it's, it's actually, it's in the ratio, the mixed ratio. Okay. So, and, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll just go right here. So, and, a, you know, conventional mix 32 to one, you know, one U S gallon, you're putting four ounces of oil in there. Okay. So if you're mixing 100 to one with one out, one gallon of oil or one ga gallon of gasoline or uh, race fuel, whatever you're using, it's 1.3 ounces. So you're using uh, what is it almost a, well about a third of the oil and so there's a third less of the oil in the fuel and what that does is you that then now you got to picture the needles in the carburetor and so with with a fuel that's got more oil in it there's good there's okay so the compensation it's got more oil in it so so basically okay so if you think of the you know tuning by the by the by the clock you know you go in hour increments well okay so i go in half hour increments and what i mean by that now don't be, don't don't get scared guys because i don't mean actual half hour increments i don't mean that okay so you see a clock as okay say it's one o'clock in an hour it'll move to two o'clock right that's the way the hour hand works well what, what i mean by half hour increments if you look at the if you look at the clock at one o'clock the hour hand will be on the one exactly now at 130, it's gonna be right in between the one and the two. That's what I mean by half hour increments. I tune, I don't know what they're what they're called by eighth or sixteenth turns. They're there's really small increments, but I tune by those. And uh let me let me try to figure out where I was going with that. So yeah, so basically what I'm saying is so if you take uh okay, so you adjust okay, so it's gonna take you twice as much of adjustment on the 25 to one to equal 
the 100 to 1 just because of the oil content in the gas in the fuel. I mean, you see what I'm saying? So, so if you make a half hour increment adjustment on 25 to 1, you'll get you'll notice this certain difference and then it'll be double that on the 101. I don't know if you guys I'm trying to figure out how how else better to arc, articulate, you know, before before I uh, started doing this video and recording, I had it all in my brain how I was going to say it and now of course I forgot it cuz my stinking brain injury, but what I'm trying to say is the oil content in the gasoline is going to is going to affect how much you need to move those needles in order to get the same result as far as tuning. So it's in my opinion it's a little easier to tune with 101 because you don't have to move the needles near as much but at the same time i like the you know the assurance with uh, the 25 to 1 and i wanted to touch on that too because you know i used to be a diehard avid 101 guy you know and and i've i've uh changed changed my tune about that you know to be honest with you i just really have and the reason I've done that is because after owning that uh, Taylor RC engine um, and seeing, you know, the kind of the, the kind of heat it produces, you definitely want that extra lubrication in there with all that heat because uh, if I mean you could just imagine what'll happen if you don't have the proper lubrication with a bunch of heat, it's just not going to work. So that's one of things one of the other things I wanted to touch on about the whole situation with the ratios and stuff because you know the that uh RC Max engine the only thing it has to cool it is that head sticking up out of there with the fins and the air blowing across it it does not have any forced induction or not forced induction like any fan blown across it there's not a fan on it you don't get a get a fan well it does have a fan on the clutch side to keep the clutch cool but it doesn't have a fan on the flywheel side as far as I'm that I know of so I haven't actually had it apart but I don't think it has a fan I think all the cooling is done on the head and the you know the fins and the casting that way so um so yeah I kind of want to touch on that thing let me see or on that stuff and so yeah oh uh, one thing I wanted to mention is uh the it's not a well-known fact but um I don't know back back in back in the days in Formula One um there were there were teams out there in Formula One. The 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 officials caught on to it, you know, pretty quick. But uh, there was these teams out there that were that figured out that uh, you know burning oil actually made the cars you know produce more horsepower and, and run a little bit better. You know, burn burning oil. And so there, there was these teams that were burning a bunch of oil through these races, and of course they're running up front because they're they're making more power and. You know things are working for them because i guess these guys figured out that burning oil in a formula one car created more power and and uh, made a big difference and and so the formula one officials caught on to it and lo and behold the f f1 this sanction f1 they they uh, came down with rules on these on these cars and it's still in effect today how much oil you can burn in a specific time in the race you can't burn any much more, any more than a certain specific amount of oil in a certain race, or you're disqualified. It's just, it's just the way it is. I, I thought that was really interesting too. And you know, uh, you know, with, with these lower and higher ratios, you know, knowing that, and okay, so maybe it works on a Formula One car, or it, it does work on a Formula One car. So maybe it works on an RC car. Maybe it doesn't. Who knows? I don't care. But I, I kind of wanted to touch on that and. Uh, I really don't think there's much else, you know, going on in today's video. Nothing more for me to ramble about. So, uh, so yeah, guys, if you like today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, guys, and you like what you see, you should consider hitting the, hitting the subscribe button. And by the su subscribe button, there's a bell notification. Select that, select all, and you get every upload I do. And don't forget, if there's something on your mind, leave a comment in the comments section, guys. We'll see you in the next one.